a little frazzled. I'm a little frazzled because my device was not charged. I ran outside to get a few things, fresh basil, and I came back to discover my iPad is at 7%. So I had to reconfigure all of my chargers and stuff. So here we are. Hi guys. Thanks for coming in. I'm going to pull a few things out of the freezer. I need some ice. I think at this point, I need a drink. So I want to know who came from for the plant sale. Who is there? Did I see any of you on Saturday? I hope I did. Hi, Jennifer. Mmm, Dory, how are you? I almost forgot your name. Valerie. Hello, Doris. Sherry, Beth, nice to see you guys. Thanks for coming on. I am so sorry that was rude of me to put my armpit up there. So here we go. Here we go. So who's here and what did you get? Beth was here, I know you were. How much is this? It's 12 ounces, so I'm gonna use half of this. Just so I know what I have on hand for next time. I'm going to make spicy spinach and basil pasta because, here's my little list, because I noticed that we had some spinach ready. Hello, Mary Beth. So we had some spinach ready, but there wasn't quite enough for me to make as much as I wanted, but clearly there is. So I got these little baby bok choys. Look at this. This is not sellable as a baby bok choy. It may be sellable if people are doing a braising mix or something or just a salad mix. If you get spring mix or something, that could be in there. But this is just a teeny tiny baby bok choy. And I cut up everything ahead of time, washed it in a big bowl of water, threw it in my salad spinner, and I'll show you that when I'm ready. Um, and then I spun them dry because we are going to add them to our gluten-free pasta. You can totally use regular pasta, whatever works for you. And I am not going to cook the greens. So I did this ahead of time because look inside there. See how the, the greens come down to the base, right? There's a lot of dirt in there. So I'm going to, I tried to remove most of that. All right. So this is what we're doing, and this is my favorite time of year. So now that we've got a bunch of people on here, thank you. I am Kasha Vialis, and I am the Farm Girl Cooks. I cook for you what I am inspired to create based on what we're growing here on our fourth generation, 55 acre vegetable farm in New York's Hudson Valley. So everything is like coming a bloom now, and it's so exciting. So this is how I kind of roll with my summer meals and we've entered the season of darkness because I am closing all the curtains and everything because it's so darn hot outside and the nighttime, the sunset shines right in that window and it's hotter than heck. So right now I try not to cook as much at this hour. So I do a lot ahead of time. This is the kind of thing that I would do ahead of time and have it ready for maybe two or three days, maybe have it for lunches, add some grilled chicken, whatever proteins you like. I was gonna do air fry or chickpeas, but I lost track of time. So gluten-free pasta, all of our basil, the mixed greens are here. If you don't have a salad spinner, it's definitely worth it. We're going to add some green garlic marinated artichoke hearts, and these pepidou peppers. These are spicy pickled little red peppers. Excellent. They have a vinegary kick, but they're not crazy hot. So they're gonna be just delicious in this dish. And then, like I said, it is not cooked except for the pasta that we cook. So while my water is boiling, I am going to make a drink because I picked a few pieces of rhubarb today and I made rhubarb puree. 
For those of you who are unfamiliar, rhubarb is a stalk. Kind of looks like Swiss chard, but it is very tart. And if you, I have heard some people do it, and I have actually done it myself, where if you just dip it in a little sugar and chew on it, it's sugar and lemon, it's delicious. So we are making a rhubarb gin fizz. Let me get some ice. I got these new bags. I'm hoping they work. These are silicone bags. Who uses these? Does anybody use these? Anybody. Do you sleep? Not much. No, hardly at all. It's one of my problems. One of my problems. So I'm trying these silicone bags for ice. Um, so the ice doesn't smell like fridge, freezer. Well, that's not working either. I feel like a train wreck today, so please tell me if I'm going off the tracks. Because it was not just insane on Saturday, you're afraid of not washing it what down well enough. The gin? Sarah. Sarah, what are you talking about? Oh, washing the spinach and bok choy and stuff. <laughs> See, I am very tired. <laughs> oh, well, this is just ice. This is just ice. Would I use this for like chicken and stuff? Probably not. But I think for things like ice, It'll be fine. I don't know, I got six of them, so I'll find out. If you're gonna do things like greens ahead of time, you could definitely put them in these bags. I don't think it would be an issue. Are you talking about cleaning the bag itself? Cleaning the bag itself or like the bag leaching something onto the food product? I'm not sure. This is my first time. Um, my cousin said she loves them. I'm gonna give it a shot. So I understand what you mean. I wouldn't use, I wouldn't use it for like uh, funky things like chicken or chili or anything like that. Okay, my water's boiling. I'm going to add some salt, abundant salt. This is your chance to get salt into your pasta. You can't see me, I'm sorry. I went on the wrong burner. That's the fast burner. Better? All right. Come back to a boil. Let's see if that comes back to a boil. So yes, I understand what you mean and we'll find out. I'll let you know. So I've got some ice in here. I am going to do two ounces of gin. I just made this up. I haven't tried it yet. We'll find out if it's good. How could it not be good? And I will tell you how I made this rhubarb simple syrup while I'm cutting up my other goodies. Two ounces of gin, about a half ounce of triple sec, that is orange liqueur. You could use Cointreau, whatever orangey thing you like. We're gonna use, this is the simple syrup. So check this out like a rhubarb syrup puree. I basically cooked it down in rhubarb in a little bit of sugar and water. And then I pushed it through a strainer to get out the fibers because this is kind of fibrous. Let's see if I can find one with fibers. So this is kind of like celery. Okay, so it has these little strings on it. So you, you want to get those strings out before you mix it in a drink. That would just make me lose my mind. All right, boil. That would make me lose my mind if there were strings in my drink. And I'm gonna add a little bit of lime juice. Just to squeeze. Did you see how I was rolling that? 
That helps you get the juice out. Okay, let's give this a shot. I'm gonna to top this off with a little bit of seltzer. I'm gonna use a pretty glass because life is too short. To use boring glassware. is unique and tart and delicious and it's very seasonal and we're going to top it off with some club soda and give it a shot looks good all right so cheers Rhubarb, gin fizz. Oh. oh, it's not terrible. It's not terrible at all. Oh, that's good. It's very good. All right, so we are back. Tell me what you want next week. I think I'll be doing it next week. I think. Um, all right, pasta's cooking, gluten-free or regular. It's up to you. Can you guys tell me where you're coming from? I know Dory's upstate. Beth is in Pennsylvania. Who else is here today? I'm gonna use a big bowl. We're gonna use a big bowl today and this is it. This is essentially the process. Very simple. Here's our greens. While this is cooking, it's as simple as, oh, I forgot to show you this one. Baby broccoli rub. Baby broccoli rub. Yeah, certainly no florets on that, right? That's how big it is right now. So cross your fingers when we open up the farm stand the weekend of June 14th, that the broccoli rub is big enough to harvest. Because when it's, baby like this you can eat it raw you can put it in a salad or like we're going to do we're just going to add it to the hot pasta and let it wilt that way throw it right in did you see that jump on the floor do you want to know how many times I've cleaned this floor in the last four days I had company so anybody who's watching that was here this weekend <laughs> We had the plant sale on Saturday, which meant there were tons of things to do beforehand. Then Sunday, we had one side of the family come to visit. So we had a little brunch that day. And then I cleaned up. And then Monday, we had family from the other side come for a visit. So we had another brunch. Whew. I can finally sit tonight, I think. Maybe. It's, um, it's awesome seeing everyone that you don't get to see frequently, and I adore them. It's just a lot of work to entertain, which is why this kind of dish is very simple for entertaining. And if we weren't so gung-ho on bagels for brunch, this would have been perfect. This last week was the green garlic. Oh no, I am not coming to help you, Dory. I do enough cleaning around here. So this is the green garlic that I used last week when I did the, um, what did I do last week? Spring rolls. Sorry, Frank. Sorry if you missed that one. Check out the reel. It's on Facebook too. So this is the green garlic that I just threw in my fridge in a plastic bag. Always put them in a plastic bag or a container, okay? Because you don't want them to dehydrate. One of the reasons these things go bad is because the outside is drying out and that's not going to be tasty. It's certainly not gonna be the right texture that you want. So like I mentioned last week, green garlic is not as strong as the dry garlic cloves. 
Not as dry, uh, not as strong as the dry garlic cloves. So you can use twice as much. I have about a tablespoon or so of minced green garlic here. And I'll let you in on a little, a little secret because you guys are insiders. All that green garlic that you saw at the farm stand on Saturday, we were picking more today. So we're gonna have a lot of that going to Adam's stores for the weekend. So hooray for that. I am cutting up some basil. My aunt mentioned that she didn't understand the term chiffonade. Basically that's cutting it into ribbons. It's a fancy way of saying it. Maybe a little more. Kind of pesto heavy when you think about it. I'm gonna take this off for garnish because it's lovely. So we're gonna stack up our leaves. I take the little guys and throw them inside. It doesn't have to be complicated, you know? You wanna put dinner on the table, chances are you're hungry and nobody needs, oh, these are cute little guys. We're gonna throw those in. Nobody needs to take an enormous amount of time. And in the summer, let me show you. So I stacked them all up and I kind of folded them. They're small, so they're not gonna be rolled easily. Make sure your knife is sharp. If you don't have a sharp knife, please get one. It will make your experience in the kitchen so much better. A sharp knife does not turn your basil black on the edges as much as a dull knife. And I do not want to cut myself. Okay, so we have lots of ribbons of basil. What happens when it bruises? This will turn black when this when the leaf is bruised. And if you're using a dull knife, it doesn't cut through it, it just kind of mashes it up. And that's really not attractive, although it smells good, it's gonna look ugly later. We're not gonna waste it, we're just gonna cut it up. So I did my greens first. There's a method to that madness. I did the greens, I did the basil, I did the green garlic, because what's coming out next is wet. So pace yourself, plan it, just kind of think ahead. It doesn't require you to write a whole list. Just think ahead to what's gonna mess up your board. And you don't wanna mess up everything that you're cooking after the fact. That would have been embarrassing. Woo! Nope. Mm. That's gonna be good. So we're gonna take out a few pepidus. And I'm not gonna be overly concerned with getting the juice. Let's see what it says. Water, sugar, vinegar, salt. Okay, citric acid. Basically pickled peppers. They're cute. You may have seen these stuffed with a little bit of goat cheese or something. You could probably do some feta in here goat cheese, whatever, uh, any kind of cheese. Any kind of cheese would be delightful. Or some kind of cured meat would be great. So I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it. If you only have six pepperdew peppers, well, that's all you're gonna do. I'm gonna cut them into quarters, maybe six. Just chop them. We're not counting. It's fine. Throw them in. So this dish is, it contains things that are pickled, but it's not going to taste like a pasta salad on the salad bar. So it has those little hints of, of pickly items, plus all the fresh vegetables, which are so important to this farm girl. Okay. A couple more. So that when you're doing this, you will find out if you have a paper cut. You'll find out in a hurry because guess who was doing paperwork today? Me. Me. So I'll send out a hearty thank you to, I can't even say how many, showed up um, on Saturday and brought me CSA applications. 
You guys are awesome. I'm so happy you're gonna join us this year. These are marinated artichoke hearts. Oof, let's try this. Marinated artichoke hearts. These are the, um, this is the heart part and this is the inside the leaves. These are all cooked and they are marinated in, again, some kind of vinegar, brine, and spices. You can find these in any store. You can also have, you can also get artichoke hearts that are not marinated. They come in a can. I don't know what kind of oil is in these. So obviously there's some fat in here. If you're avoiding that, you can get the canned artichoke hearts that don't have any dressing. And that's fine too. They still taste good. Okay, we're gonna throw a bunch of artichoke hearts in there. I'm gonna give that a taste shortly. This is a six ounce, six ounce jar. And since I'm only making this once, I'm just gonna use them all. Because I don't need a jar with four artichoke hearts sitting in my fridge, it's like a graveyard. You want, um, you don't need to chop it up too finely, okay? Just a little bit, because you still want a mouthful. This, I will ditch, because there's only a little bit of oil at the top and mostly a brine on the bottom. Let's clean this up. This is what I meant by cleaning, um, cutting up the clean things first and the messy things after. Because if you weren't here tonight, I would probably flip the board over so I had a nice clean surface to work on. Looks good, right? I'm just gonna rinse my hand. We gotta give this pasta a taste. Let's see. This is so fast. Oh, I need to tell you about my rhubarb simple syrup. Hot. Mm. Mm. It's almost done. All right, so here's this. We're gonna throw a little bit of olive oil in here because we're gonna pull our pasta out and put it right into the bowl. One minute. So rhubarb simple syrup. Four ounces of rhubarb cut about a mm, quarter inch thick and I put it in a little skillet with half a cup of water and half a cup of sugar. I let it cook for about mm, seven minutes and it all cooks down to mush. Rhubarb really cooks down a lot that's why it's a very common jam thing. cooks down a lot. I put it into a strainer and pressed it out. It smelled like a um, fruit roll up. It was funny. It smelled like a fruit roll up. And I scooped that out, got rid of that. And then I have this and it's delightful. And it lasts in your fridge for weeks. So don't, uh, don't hesitate doing that. Let's grab a picture or two. Really, Kasha? There it goes. Cool. So try the rhubarb. I know we ran out this weekend, but we will have more. Might have choked Artie, but <laughs> not gonna choke you. Wait a minute, that's not choking you. I think it was stymie, but okay. I remember that episode. Who else remembers Little Rascals? I'm old enough to say I remember watching them. Not the originals in the movies. I remember watching them on Channel 11. Anybody else? Just me and Chris? All right. Hot stuff. I've done this for you before. Definitely drain it in the sink. That's fine. See, I knew Sarah you would know. <laughs> Thank you, Beth. Those were some of the best shows. And if I showed Thomas those now, he would probably think I was insane. You can um, drain this in a colander in the sink. That's totally fine. But I wanna do this for you. 
And it's okay if you get a little bit of water, you just don't want too much. Remarkable, wait, which one was that? There was a little boy that said remarkable. Those are so, I don't know, fun. I like when they glued the baby. They glued the baby's diaper to the floor because the kids are babysitting. They're terrible. All right, I think we're good. Oh, one last noodle. Get out of here. All right, we're gonna stir it up and give it a taste and add some grated parm. Give it a stir. This is it. The hot pasta is going to cook the spinach just enough. Oh, it already smells good. When you take things like our marinated artichoke hearts, pepperdus and stuff out of the um, out of the fridge, they smell just like vinegar. But when you add them to hot things like the pasta, it just helps things bloom. And I'm gonna use that word. It helps them bloom. Just like a flower would bloom and be beautiful. The fragrance of those pickly things or anything really tastes amazing. It smells amazing when they are at room temperature. So it kind of balances out the temperature a little bit. So that's it. That's what we're looking at here. Simple, okay. You can add as many greens as you want. I like a lot of greens. Cause that's how, that's how we work around here. We're gonna give it a shot. See how this tastes without cheese. I will add cheese, believe me. Mm. Well, that's good. So grilled chicken, grilled chicken would make that delicious. You could even add, I'm wondering why I'm hot. There's a pot of water steaming up my back. No wonder I'm hot. I don't need any help. Okay, Parmesan, this is Parmesan and Reggiano. Yes. All right, I'm gonna use my Y peeler. Kuhn Rucon. I love these Y peelers. They make peeling a snap. Peeling a snap, and we're just gonna shave. That's how you do it. Uh, you can use Pecorino if you like. You can use grated cheese if you want. This just has more distinct mouth parts. I guess that would be a good way to put it. You would have multiple bites of things that are distinct and it just doesn't meld together like a bunch of pesto would where you're mashing everything up. Mm. Look how lovely. So would you add more pasta or less pasta? I like more greens than pasta. Anybody? You can't wait till the farm stand open. I know, I know. We are having a pop-up plant sale Saturday. I'll be there manning the stand by myself so you can come and we can have coffee together. Nine until 12. Let me get a bowl and show you what this looks like. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> liability. That was bad. Come and see me and we can chit chat. June 14th and 15th is a Friday, Friday, Saturday. And we're going to have our grand opening weekend of the farm stand. And then our CSA starts on June 18th. That's a Tuesday. So when I make this, I do add it didn't need any salt, by the way, because I added a lot enough salt to the pasta and the peppered pep, pickled pep, wow, pickled peppers. The pickled peppers had enough salt and vinegar as well as the artichoke hearts. We're gonna throw a little bit more on top here. And that's that. I just kind of want to eat out of the bowl, the big bowl. 
that looks lovely. What do you think? We could totally do that, right? How easy was that? More greens, less pasta. Good. So this was six ounces of pasta and it's gluten-free pasta. It doesn't really taste like it, so I think it's brown rice. Where's my box? Brown rice flour and water. Okay, so it's brown it's brown rice pasta. But it has a good a good chew to it and it doesn't um doesn't fall apart readily. Just make sure when you're cooking this kind of stuff that you use a lot of water. If you don't use enough water, then the pasta gets stuck together and clumpy and it's not good like that. So we had the mixed green spicy basil pasta and a delicious rhubarb gin fizz. So thank you. I hope you guys try it. This was my mother-in-law's request for Mother's Day. What, this dish? Cause this has been around a while, but I've never made it with broccoli ramen bok choy. Did you make it, Kristen? I wanna know. It's yummy. And I'm gonna eat. And look, I'm wearing pink. Not at all what I looked like on Saturday. <laughs> it's good. It's very good. My mother says the highlight of the tasting is the wiggle. Mmm, Kristen, what a good idea. Mozzarella balls in here would be fantastic. The great thing about this is make it and take it. You can bring it to a party, bring it to a barbecue. The cheese, of course, would be an issue if you were going to store it at room or hot temperatures for a while. But other than that, it's fine for an hour or two. So take it with you. All right, I guess that's it. I can let Thomas, oh, I didn't use my chive blossoms. Chive flowers, I think I used those last time, right? So I'm gonna throw some chive blossoms on here just for fun. All right, look. I could not have tried any better to get that right in the middle. Oh, this is gonna be so good. And I might just do this. Because the olive oil tastes good. All right. Okay, gin, rhubarb gin fizz, spicy spinach and basil pasta with pepperdues and artichoke hearts, and easy peasy, throw it all together, sit down to eat in a half hour. Not bad, huh? I hope I see you guys. I need some tomatoes and strawberries in that. Let's just not. <laughs> Hank just likes the bok choy, Chris. Some, you know what? Give your dogs bok choy, they love it. All right, I'm out of here. I appreciate you watching and I'll let you know what's coming up next week. Come and see me on Saturday if you need some assistance with your herb plantings. Lots of basil parsley, all kinds of good things, and I can help you out, all right? So thank you, and I will see you next week.